Welcome, this presentation was a group effort between three rural librarians from two rural Alaskan communities. This combined presentation will highlight a select number of programs each library has hosted in their community. I feel it is not the size of a library's facility or a town's population count that makes a difference. What matters is the members within your community and staff working together to create meaningful programs. I also feel it is important to have a fun, cozy, and welcoming atmosphere for library visitors. Here are two entertaining displays I created for our visiting patrons. The Olaf book display was made for our Winterfest activity and the Minion Pilgrim for the Thanksgiving holiday. The three presenters recognize the importance of exchange and ideas to provide a social and learning experience while remaining humble, grateful, and respectful of their guest speakers and the subjects featured in these programs. The group will begin by sharing the first Alaskan Institute meaning dialogue. In every chair a leader, speak to be understood, listen to understand. Be present, be engaged, value our time together. Challenges equal solutions, take us thou hats off. Our value of humor helps us. We are responsible for our experience. Take care of yourself, take care of each other. I would like to share a short exercise with you. What do you think of when I say the word parka or dog team? Perhaps an image of Alaska Native person wearing a parka or the Iditarod race to Nome, Alaska came to mind. I shared those words with you as an example to think deeper about a culture. It could be any culture. The iceberg model here shows the tip of a culture, below the surface, the deep culture. This model helps one to begin to form ideas that are meaningful, interactive, and educational. I asked about the words parka and dog team. The word parka could be applied to pattern recognition, clothing design, insulation, dog teams, or sledding could fall under navigation skills, tools, building design, materials, weather forecasting, animal behavior, and much more. The next few slides will show how one artist combines storytelling and art. Artist Beth Hill partnered with the library for an exhibit titled Through the Stories of Our Elders. This exhibit had nine oil paintings displayed depicting visual representations from a scene from each story. Three of the nine paintings will be in this presentation. The artist did not request a fee. Instead, she asked me for some guidance and help to host her first exhibit on a smaller scale before she had to present her exhibit on a larger platform. To host this event, the NACNIC Library partnered with the local owner of the Sockeye and Grill restaurant for a venue. Next, staff worked on the logistics for equipment and created flyers for the event. The restaurant provided a larger space and seating options than the library building. The library did not have to cater this event. The restaurant serves appetizers, food, and drinks for purchase. Karen shared her story with Beth about the effects of the oil spill on the land and marine life. In the background is a worker spraying water onto the oil-soaked beach. Painted on the woman's clothing is an octopus, otter, herring, gull eggs, eagle, orca, salmon, myrrh, herring fish eggs, and herring fish on the boots. Dean says everything is connected. Here the artist gave me the following to share in a quote. The story of Nova Rupta is a story of survival and endurance. A story that begins with a story and how the people of the small village of Old Savanowski survived because of the knowledge passed down through elders which enabled the village to gather fresh water and supplies and store them in the Bedarkas days before the major eruption occurred. After the eruption, the entire area was covered in darkness. The men were sent in their Bedarkas downriver to look for a place to resettle, while the women and children gathered whatever they could carry, walking for days along the shore. They finally came to a place now known as New Savinoski, 
a few miles from away from what is now South Naknek, Alaska, where they began a new life again. This painting has five words inserted, desire, knowledge, common sense, wisdom, and gratitude. Paul further explained the meaning of each word he shared in his story to Beth. Desire, to learn and want something better. Knowledge, what you need to obtain in order to get what you want or need. Common sense, without common sense, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you have, you need common sense to survive. Wisdom, using knowledge and common sense to make good decisions. Gratitude, being thankful for what you have brings a sense of contentment and unity to life. Here is the artist's professional website. There is also an app available titled Elder Stories. The app includes all nine oil paintings and the associated audio of each elder's story. Speaking of stories, I remember a story from a past conference shared by a librarian from a community of about 70 people. Picking berries is a common subsistence lifestyle in rural Alaska. She had a brilliant idea for a program. She hosted a berry contest. I don't remember the exact contest rules, whether it was to find the smallest, largest, or even a certain type of berry like a blueberry or cranberry. But what I do recall was she talked about the contestants finding the largest berry and berries were to be brought to her to be entered into the contest. The humor in her story was while the size of each berry was being measured to see who the winners would be, along came a small child and helped themselves to either one or several of the berries. Attending library conferences enriches one's professional development and where friendships are made, networking opportunities are formed and where stories are shared with others. Here I was invited to join a local dog team owner. The library had previously worked in partnership with her hosting a sled dog activity. She later asked me to join her on my day off while she trained two of her sled dogs. It was a fun filled day for the both of us. May you continue to create your own trails while building meaningful, helpful, and mindful connections with others. I would like to now introduce you to Marguerite and Janet of Nome, Alaska, Quiana. Thank you, Sheila, for that beautiful presentation and welcome to our part of the presentation. I am Marguerite and I have had the honor of working at the Kagoya Kazga Public Library in Nome, Alaska for the past 13 years. And I am Janet of Nome, Alaska, and I was born and raised here and currently live here. I am of King Island and Little Daimi descent from the Siganas and, uh, and of Wales and Little Daimi descent of the Analooks. And I have worked at this library for about 13 years also. This is a photo of the Richard Foster building. Our building had its grand opening in 2016, and we are honored to share this building with the Carrie M. McLean Memorial Museum and the Katarvik Cultural Center. This photo shows the area where the library is housed. We have beautiful views and high ceilings. And those windows on the front, that is our teen area. And the architects specifically put the windows there because they said the teens like to see who's coming and going right there from the parking lot. The back window is where our adult section is. And just above the stairs, that's where our children's section is. The second photo shows the area where the Katervik Cultural Center is located. And behind the Cultural Center is the Carrie M. McLean Memorial Museum. The three organizations share a common lobby.
here is a closer photo of the beautiful whale bones, which were installed by the Cultural Center. And that window right there is the gathering area of our Cultural Center. This presentation celebrates different types of programming that we have offered in our small rural library. The book Berry Magic is very popular in our library. We are a community that deeply appreciates our subsistence lifestyle. To honor the gathering of berries, we commissioned a local doll maker to create a doll to represent each berry in the book. And if you look at the dolls closely, she specially put berries in one hand and she put berry buckets in the other hand. And this is uh, these sets of dolls are wonderful while we're reading this book during our story times. This picture shows our children's area. This is one wall in our children's area. And at our grand opening, we asked the cultural center if they would be willing to provide to us the words and spelling for the three local languages so that we could celebrate the languages in our region. Here you will see the flyers uh, that we use when we had Joan Kane come to visit us in Nome. The first flyer uh, was a part of a celebration to honor her new book, The Cormorant Hunter's Wife, and to honor her as a recipient of the Whiting Prize. Uh, we partnered with many local organizations and uh, we were very honored to have the King Island drummers perform at this celebration. Later, we had Joan Kane come to Nome again. This was under, under an interlibrary cooperation grant called Poetry North. We partnered with two other rural Alaskan communities. And in the grant, we spoke about the importance of celebrating the poetry of Alaska. When Joan came to Nome, she taught a class on writing and the cultural self uh, at the UAF Northwest campus. She also uh, was kind enough to visit the schools and speak with our students about the writing process. So my first experience with Joan is that um, she gives off a very warm energy and makes you feel at ease and welcomed. Joan is also part of the same lineage as me. We are both of King Island descent. So I automatically had a feeling of kinship with her, but hearing her speak is like having water flow through your fingers and into your mind. And she was actually one of the first native authors I actually felt a connection to because she represents a culture that is not often represented with the full face of what the native experience is like. Um, and I, I didn't understand that when I was a young adult, when I first uh, met and learned of her, uh, I didn't understand the depth of what the representation of her would mean to me. But now that I'm reflecting on all, reflecting on all of this and the growing number of Alaskan native authors and poets that have emerged from the figurative chrysalis of art and poetry, the beauty of it is humbling and monumental for the current generation and the future generation generations of Alaskan natives. Our next poet under the Poetry North program was Ishmael Hope. We had an evening of storytelling with him and we asked uh, other storytellers to come and participate as well. Ishmael Hope also was happy to visit our schools. 
we had uh, talked a lot about which poets we were going to invite under this program. And Ishmael Hope had been a speaker at our Alaska Library Association conference. And we were just so, so um, impressed by his presence that uh, we reached out to him and he graciously agreed to come to each of our communities. Um, in my community, I also partnered with one of the local tribal organizations. They uh, very graciously purchased a few hundred copies of his book, Strongman, that we could distribute to our students at the elementary school. And uh, it, it was a great, great success. And we were very happy with his visit to us. Uh, yes, it was an honor to meet and to listen to Ishmael. And in what I remember of him in Nome is we were having lunch with him one day and he shared an interesting fact slash story of a prominent native elder and said elder's name escapes me, but he was mentioning that he predicted that society would come to talk with their thumbs and it, it has come to pass. The next program that we would like to speak about is was the 2016 Alaska Reads program. In this program, it is a statewide program where a committee chooses a book and a living Alaska author of that book. The program then encourages as many Alaskans as possible to read the chosen book and the author uh, visit as many communities as possible. Ernestine Hayes was extremely intelligent and gracious, and she really had expressed an interest to visit Nome. The only thing that was a little bit tricky for us was that 2016 is when our new building was built, and she was uh, coming February 15th, and the library was actually not going to be ready until later that month. So we partnered with the Northwest Campus, and they agreed to have her visit in their beautiful conference room. So that was a great situation where uh, because of our strong connections to the community, we could still have Ernestine come to visit us, even though we actually at the point didn't have a physical library space. But she was amazing. And many, many people are still talking about her visit uh, to know. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Meeting Ernestine was abs an absolute pleasure. Uh, one of the things she did mention while she was here is that she had a surefire way to know if any, if anyone interviewing her had read her book, Wand Indian or not, was, uh, and she would say, there's a particular question I ask if, to see if they read it. If the interview, interviewer had said, so why do you call your book Blonde Indian? And um, she would give a little chuckle after listening to that question and she's like well you would have to read the book to know <laughs> it's kind of an inside joke this program was also very special to us Eileen Norbert uh, has been a resident of Nome on and off um, and so we really wanted to honor this book that she wrote Minata Look. It is a beautiful book and we reached out to the Katarvik Cultural Center and they agreed to partner with us. So we had a book signing and a presentation that she gave. It was a really beautiful reception that followed. And we then, uh, submitted her book to win the 2018 Alaskana Award at the Alaska Library Association Conference. We were so, so proud 
that she won this award. It was very deserving. And uh, I can't say enough wonderful things about this book and enough wonderful things about her. She is a fascinating speaker and we are very, very lucky to have her in Nome. Yeah, Eileen has always been a part of this community since long before I can remember really before I was born. And she, look, reading the book and learning about how strong and hardy um, our native people used to be pre-colonization and pre-1918 epidemic, it was really eye-opening to learn how like we would push pull 700 pounds of meat across the Bering Sea ice. It was eye-opening to say the least. Carrie Ojanin had published her book of poetry, Roughly for the North. And in this particular situation, the Nome Arts Council reached out to us to partner with them. Uh, we also worked with the Katarvik Cultural Center. They graciously, again, allowed us to use their space for her celebration and also to use their gathering room for a class that she taught to youth about writing. Uh, she also very graciously went to the schools and the, the students were just so impressed with her. And she also, uh, another thing that we often do with our authors is we take them to the local radio stations to record an interview. And this is another really wonderful way. Uh, sometimes somebody is able to only visit us for a couple of days, but when their voice and their poetry or their books are read during an interview, the radio stations will continue to uh, play those programming segments and it's just a, a great way to continue to hear people's voices even if they can't be here year-round with us. So that's one other thing that I encourage is definitely reach out to your radio stations or if you have TV stations and um, ask your authors if they're willing to do an interview also with the newspapers. Just another way to get as many people as involved with knowing these wonderful authors. Uh, Carrie is also a part of the same lineage as me. She, she is from a King Island descent. So being linked in a familiar way helps actually events go smoothly and effortlessly. And on the cover of her book is a drawing of her grandmother, um, Cecilia Matoyak, who is also on the celebratory cake. But there's a special story behind the cake. There was a totally different design for it we had made. But funny enough is when we went to get the cake made, a family member of Carrie's was working that day and said, we'll take care of the cake and, and not to worry about it. And the end result is so much better than when what, what we had in mind. And this the surprising connection of family made this night that much sweeter and memorable. And this slide shows uh, um, the next author that we are going to have visit us, Joni Spice. We are hoping to have her here soon. She is the author of Mittens and Mukluks, Winter in Alaska, the book to the far left. She is also the author of Alaska Native Games and How to Play Them, 25 Contests that Survive the Ages. Joni Spice is also, uh, she comes from our community. Uh, she does not currently live in Nome. However, she was my daughter's kindergarten teacher and my daughter is now in college. So I have a huge amount of respect for her. She has a tremendous amount of energy and we are very, very much looking forward to her visit. Thank you very, very much for joining us today as Janet and I have been able to share 
our programs in our small rural library with you. Liana, and thank you for listening. <laughs>